and welcome to Health Matters on Channels Television. Thanks for joining us. I am Mary Alale Yusuf. Diabetes is a chronic metabolic disease characterized by elevated blood glucose levels. This can lead to the compromise of certain organs in the body. According to the World Health Organization, the number of people with diabetes rose almost 400% from 108 million in 1980 to 422 million in 2014. In 2019, diabetes and kidney disease due to diabetes caused an estimated 2 million deaths. A healthy diet and regular physical activity are some of the ways to prevent or delay the onset of type 2 diabetes. My guest is a consultant physician at CardioCare Abuja, Dr. Iseko Iseko. He joins us from our Abuja studio. You're welcome to the show, sir. Thank you for having me. So, elevated blood sugar levels, but we are told that we have two types of diabetes, uh, type 1 or juvenile, and then type 2. What's the difference? All right, thank you very much for having me. Diabetes is a very important disease, and um, it's important to note that, yes, people say two types, but they are really much more than two types. Um, when we say type 1 and type 2, what we are saying is whether is the amount of insulin deficiency that is present. Diabetes essentially occurs when there is either an absolute insulin deficiency or there is insulin, but the body is unable to react or respond appropriately to the insulin in the body. Um, so that is why we try and call them type 1 and type 2. But we know that it's really more than this. There are other types that have been characterized much more than this. So in type 1, which typically more often happens in starts in younger people less than 30. Type 2 typically happens in older people more than 30. Um, in type 1, there's an absolute insulin deficiency, and most times these people have to be treated with insulin. They need to give themselves additional insulin. In type 2, um, the insulin may not be completely deficient, but their body cells do not react to it. So insulin is unable to convert the energy in, from food into energy that their cells can use. Now there are other types, gestational diabetes, which essentially is diabetes that occurs in women that are pregnant. And we also have other types of diabetes that could be secondary to tumors, diseases, drugs, and other things. Um, so those are some of the types that um, relate to diabetes. Who, who gets diabetes? What, what are the risk factors? All right, so this is a common question we, we hear all the time. And um, a lot of people tend to think there's a common myth in Nigeria that says we that eat, people that eat too much sugar are the ones that get diabetes. But the truth of the matter is that diabetes rate has increased, like you said earlier, dram dramatically. Number one, there are some non-modifiable risk factors that could predispose someone to getting diabetes, and there are some modifiable risk factors. Some of the more no no modifiable risk factors include um, family history or genetics, um, your um, age as you grow older, some of these things tend to, um, in, uh, your genes, what you've inherited from your parents. And then the modifiable risk factors essential, which is responsible for the increase in diabetes prevalence, is what we eat, our diet. The more increase in the amount of, pro, no, of, easy, of processed foods, of glucose-heavy carbohydrates, the increase in or uh, worsening in lifestyle changes, people that do not sit down all the time, they are um, sedentary lifestyles, people that smoke, have ex take excessive alcohol, all of that contributes essentially to the people that have an increased risk for diabetes. Now, if you have a combination of both, that is you are overweight, you smoke, you, you eat wrong, um, you live a sedentary lifestyle, and you also have a family history, then that further increases the risk of developing this condition, which is actually a lifelong condition called diabetes. Is hundreds of millions of people who have diabetes now, 422 million. Could this have be, been avoided if people had taken care of their modifiable risks, like not being obese, uh, being active and all that? Could it have been avoided? Or how much of it could so have indeed, been avoided? It, 
Yes, so indeed, a lot of diabetes could be avoided or significantly delayed in onset. We do know that essentially the International Diabetes Federation um, set up World Diabetes Day, which is November 14th, to increase education, awareness, and advocacy for diabetes. And the essence is that when people know, more, know better, they will do better. The idea is that if people are able to control their weight, um, increase their activity in terms of exercises, they are able to... Um, you know, um, in, um, do a lot of these things. It can, A, reduce the onset, reduce the uh, amount of people that have it, but also delay the onset. There are some studies that have been done even right here in Nigeria that have shown that people that engage in exercise could delay diabetes onset by as much as 20 years from occurrence. Now, if we also combine that with adjusting the kind of food we eat, now we know a lot of processed foods have come to the market, fast foods, foods that, are, that are, have a high glycemic index, all these things all come together. If people can make this change, then Nigeria will be better because diabetes significantly affects economies. It significantly causes a high amount of cost burden in terms of healthcare financing. 20 years delay is a lot of time. If somebody yeah. can get, say, 20 years, 20 to 30 years, they can totally avoid it for life. If, as you say, type 2 diabetes comes maybe later in life, then with modification of habits and lifestyle, you delay it another 20 or so years, then you can totally escape, can't you? Yes, to a large extent, but behavioral modification, as we know, is very difficult. Um, even if I told you I'm going to give you 20 billion naira, just hold your breath for 15 minutes. A time will come when you will not be able to do that again because certain things have been ingrained in the way you live and work. So these behavioral changes really need education first, then it needs a lot of motivation, it needs a lot of group um, effect, and a lot of understanding from all sides. It's important that, you know, as medical doctors like we are, the healthcare ministries, everybody comes together to help people make it easier for these things to happen. Will you be able to take a walk in your city? Are there places, to, are there designated walk areas? Are there ways where we can do exercise freely and safely? So if these things are not made easy, it becomes a challenge. If you go to the West, you find that a lot of countries have dedicated bicycle paths. They have dedicated parks, places that people can do lots of exercise. And you see a lot of people doing all of these things. And this can truly happen, but it's really difficult, I must say. Okay, but with the rise now in non-communicable diseases, you have uh, um, heart attacks, you have uh, um, diabetes, cancer. Shouldn't that be at the forefront of our health advocacy? Having parks, Definitely. having walkways, all that kind of thing. Definitely, you're absolutely right. It must be at the forefront. And unfortunately, Africa and West Africa, uh, Sub-Saharan Africa, of which Nigeria is a part, is undergoing what we call a double body or double barrel. Um, we still have the traditional communicable diseases of malaria, TB, HIV, and the like plaguing us. Then we now have another round of diseases called the non-communicable disease, hypertension, diabetes. Um, most of my practice, actually all my practice is essentially around this. If there is a lot of work done, I can tell you that there will be a significant difference in the way we actually live the length of life. We know that the length of um, the average lifespan or the um, life expectancy for a Nigerian is a little bit low. But this is because we need to be able to embrace newer ways of living. The society essentially has become more modernized, which means we work less, we eat more processed foods, we eat less of the traditional foods, we, we enter cars more, and we try and park our cars right in front of our offices or our churches. We like to use lifts more, and all of these things tend to add up cumulatively over time and then increase this, um, the spate of this disease. When should someone begin to suspect that they might have diabetes? What signs are they looking for? Okay, thank you very much. So diabetes typically presents in three ways, more or less. The first way, and which is one of the reasons why we are here, is the fact that it could be asymptomatic, absolutely no symptoms at all. That is the first way diabetes could present. And on that case, people should actually go and get screened. This World Diabetes Day, most hospitals, private and public, will be doing free screenings. Take the advantage and just check your blood sugar um, and your, your HbA1c. So the first way is 
asymptomatic. The second way is that the people could present with symptoms. And uh, we know that one in two Nigerians or Africans that have diabetes do not know that they have it. But they could present with symptoms like excessive thirst, always wanting to drink water, excessive urination, um, weight loss, tiredness, you know, just exhaustion, um, recurrent illnesses, infections, and all of that. Now, the third way they could come up with diabetes or show that they have diabetes is um, with complications. And we see that a lot at cardio care, coming first time with a stroke, coming first time with a heart attack, coming first time with a diabetic foot, coming first time with a kidney failure. All of these could be the first time if somebody could present with diabetes, and it's really unfortunate, really, because if they had checked, number one, if they had been attentive to the symptoms, number two, and if they did not have any symptoms and were only going to come to competition, if they had checked, they could have had access to really good quality healthcare, which is available right here in Nigeria across the entire nation. So from, from what you're saying, the surest way to catch diabetes is don't wait for symptoms, you should check. Now let me quickly indeed, go indeed, back to indeed. let me quickly go back to something you said about food, you know, eating wholesome food. A lot of doctors say if you want to eat good food, cook it yourself. Now, what shouldn't we be throwing into the pot if we are cooking our food? So essentially it is good to cook your food yourself and if you have to eat outside, make sure that the food is eat is cooked in a proper way. What we, should do, what we should be reducing, most of Nigerian foods and sub-Saharan African foods, which is why we are one of the hot spots for diabetes over the next 20 years, is carbohydrates, large in carbohydrates. What we should be worried about is the amount of carbohydrates in our food, the amount of rice, yam, spaghetti, noodles, that flour-based substance that form our food. We want our food to be balanced. We want a small portion of the food, yes, to be carbohydrates, but to also have a significant portion of vegetables, of proteins, and of, of fruits in every meal. So that we balance it out. Having a huge heap of rice or of swallow uh, typically does not help matters. And this high carbohydrate body essentially means that the body has a high, high load of glucose um, to deal with every time we eat. So if you've checked the average Nigerian's meal, it is full of carbohydrates. And this is what we want to try and teach. Don't let your meal be more than your carbohydrate content be more than your feast, um, you know, in, in quantity. And then put vegetables fresh, put all of that and make sure you stabilize it. Of course, we want to reduce excessive sugar or things that are sweet in our meals. This should help us very largely. Let me quickly uh, throw in this question before, before I let you go. Um, we talk about diabetes being too much sugar in the blood, but people say that sometimes blood levels drop so low that the person is about to collapse. What's the secret behind that? What does that mean? So when sugar levels um, in the blood drop low, we call that hypoglycemia. Um, essentially, w this could happen for several reasons. If you have not eaten for a long time, you could have that. In patients that have diabetes, this could be to, due to several reasons, which will include um, having a wrong dose of drug or taking the drugs inappropriately. Whenever anybody has a very low blood sugar, they need to get urgent help because it will cause brain injury, it could cause loss of consciousness, it could cause a lot of issues. And that is why diabetes is not one of the diseases that you can manage by yourself over the counter in a pharmacy. It's one of the diseases that absolutely requires that you see a doctor, that you go to a hospital, that you have regular checks. We check several things, three things in particular. We check number one, the fasting blood sugar. We check number two, the blood sugar that ha happens two hours after a meal, and we typically check um, the HbA1c, which tells us the average blood sugar over a three-month period. We also check cholesterol and other things. When we put this in perspective and it's checked and it's under control, the chances of having a low blood sugar are much less. But low blood sugar in the absence of any problem it rarely causes because you can just go and eat or something. However, low blood sugar that is caused as a result of taking insulin or taking drugs could really be catastrophic, and it's, that's why it's important that you make sure you are being seen by a qualified physician. So, Iseko Iseko, consultant physician, thank you so much for that enlightenment, so much packed into a, a, a little bit of time. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you very much for having me on Cardio Care. So we're taking a short break now. Wait till after the break. Something else. Very interesting.
Welcome back. It's Health Matters on Channels Television. But we're looking at something different, talking about drugs. Many entities looking for a fast buck have mimicked drugs on the market, coming up with fake and substandard products. Procold, a product of Orange Drugs Limited, used for colds, the flu, and Qatar is one of those preparations. This year, Procold launched a campaign Hashtag original movement, having received the endorsement of the Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria. As part of the plan, and part of the plan is to help consumers recognize the original product for an informed choice. Joining me in the studio is head of brand for Procold, Marvin Lucky. You're welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me. So Procold is for colds, Correct. Qatar, and flu. How does it work? Because they tell us that uh, colds, Qatar, and flu will go in their own good time. Correct. They are viruses. Correct. So what does Procol really do for us? Okay, so actually when we think about cold and Qatar, it's kind of a, like a common disease. But it somehow distracts our daily life. And it can go until weeks, two weeks, three weeks. So that's why we come with Procol, with the ingredients that can... Um, uh, um, uh, release and relieve the illness okay. of uh, uh, cold and Qatar. We have some ingredients because there are some of the cold medicines that do doesn't have a complete ingredients. But Procol itself, we have paracetamol because you know when you get cold, it's kind of like a complication of illness. You not go only for the fever, but it's coming with fatigue. Uh, nasal discomfort, even headache. So that those kind of illness that we need to treat accordingly, then which Procol has uh, all of the ingredients to uh, hit those kind of illness. So you still have a school, but you sort of feel better about it yeah. because you don't feel all those fatigue, heaviness, and correct. all that kind of thing. Yes, correct, correct. Right. Because Procol has paracetamol for the headache and for the yeah. fever. We have phenylephrine to relieve the nasal discomfort and also we have chlorophenyl malleate is for the allergic okay. because somehow cold is not coming from the virus and bacteria but it's also coming from the allergic you okay. know from fur from dust and it can re um, give um, you know like very discomfort for the cold something like that yeah okay so you're saying that some people have done fake products oh yes and they are there in the market yes. how do we recognize an original Procode product that's going to do all these things? Yeah. First of all, I want to address that this issue is, is a very big issue. Uh, we are all in this together. It's not coming from the company, but we also fighting together with yes. the government. Because Pharmaceutical Nafda. Society of Nigeria yes. is behind correct, you. Correct, correct. So, you know, there's a lot of fake products and even Me Too products. They don't use Procol name, but they have a similar name like Procol. Is that what you call a Me Too product? Yes, we call it Me Too products. And if you can see this, um, uh, this design, they use our design with the different names. But okay. uh, some of the people, they might think that, oh, maybe that brand is a sister brand of Procol, but it's actually not. So we are coming with that kind of idea to have a collaboration with Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria to educate, to encourage Nigerian to understand what kind of products and the ingredient inside it. Something like that. Okay. So I'm a customer. Oh, yes. Please. Maybe Thank I'm you going. <laughs> <laughs> it's just an example. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going to the market to buy yeah. cocoa mm -hmm. and I want to be sure I got the right product. Okay. What do I look out for? Okay. So if you can see this uh, uh, box, you open it, okay? So if you can see this, this uh, orange drugs logo, okay. okay? That's the first sign that you might looking at for Procol. And then if you open it, there's also a Procol brand inside. Okay. Even when you open it inside, there's an embossed stated of Procol. So there's a read. So they emboss Procol yes, on written. the tablet. Yes, I know it's too many, like too many steps, but it's never been too much for our health, right? No, it's never too much. Yes, correct. So this is the step to understand for Proco, whether which one is the original, which one is the fake products, something like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this uh, movement, this 
original hashtag original movement yes, is not just about pro code. Correct. Definitely. You, you are saying that you want to educate yeah. the buyer to yeah. always get an original product. Yes. How does a buyer get educated about original products? Pro code has its own you know, unique style. Yeah. They have an embossment on the tablet, they have a tamper-proof pack, and then they have the logo. But generally, what would you tell somebody looking for an original drug to look out for? Okay, so it's kind of like a long story is coming from this campaign, the original movement. So as a number one brand, because we're already being established 35 years, we are taking around 40% of the market share. And then we think that we have to go further as a number one brand. So it's not only like having bigger market share, but we have to give back to the community. So that's why we're coming with a, a collaboration with Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria. So with that national body uh, for the pharmacists, of course, we also hope that it will uh, encourage all of the members, which is all of the pharmacists, to provide the best uh, products. Not only the most expensive one, no, but it has to be a high quality, the original, authentic, with the proper medications. So that's the way that we try to educate uh, the, uh, uh, all Nigerian through pharmacies. So are you centering your, your efforts on just the consumer? If, for example, you get somebody, you catch somebody who is faking the drugs, mm -hmm. or making them substandard, mm -hmm. do you have an agreement of what you're going to do with such a person? Oh, of course, because the fake product is actually not approved by NAFDAQ. The one that is approved always being stated on this uh, on the uh, on the uh, on the packaging. So it's the NAFDAQ number has to be there. So the fake product they doesn't have uh, they don't have the NAFDAQ number. So we also collaborating closely with NAFDAQ and the police, and then we try to catch. Um, the, 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 the producer of the fake product. But I know it's not an easy task because they are kind of like going here, catching here, it's everywhere. But the thing that we need to educate is the people. So we need to make sure that the people go for the right uh, medicine, for, for the right illness. So very quickly now, what could happen to a person who is using a substandard product? Um, for example, it will have a health side effect. It will impact to your uh, liver. And also, of course, for the long periods, it will impact to the whole body of uh, yourself. I know cold medicine is a quite standard medicine, but it's an education about not only pro cold, like not only a cold medicine, but it's a regular, like a total medicine as a whole. So can you imagine if you have a wrong uh, medicine for longer periods. So what kind of a side effect of your body that will that will occur in the future? So that's all about the campaigns. Thank you very much, Marvin Lucky. Thank that was so educative. Thank you so much for staying with us. That's it on the program. Let's do it again next week. Have a lovely day. I am Mary Alale Yusuf.